okay in this video we will talk about the gen times command in splunk okay so gen times is a very simplistic command in splunk which is basically used as the name suggests to generate the time right so it basically generate timestamp values for a particular date ranges which you can give as a start and the end date range over there okay and in, you can also give the increment value as well like what will be the increment whether it's a one day one hour or something like that okay so based on this these three inputs it basically creates the timestamp values okay so that that's the core functionality of the gen times command now it can be used in 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 lot of purpose in splunk so mainly it used with with in conjunction with map command because if you remember previous in my previous video we talked about the map command there right so basically you can run a particular search based on all the different different events we have for for a particular event or for all the events for a particular result set you can run a search over there right so in those cases maybe it may be needed to have some kind of playing around with the time value as well okay in the inner search so in those cases you can use gen times as well okay so we'll see those some some of the examples today now functionality wise if i just talk about it it takes three arguments start end and the increment value okay now over there in in start and end you can give either a timestamp or a numeric value okay which will basically tell how many days before okay so let let me let me show you that one now when we give the timestamp value it has to be in this way this manner okay so the format has to be mm dd and yyyy format so if i just go over here and run similar search command like gen times okay and let's say from december 1st onward that's why i'm giving this is the month of december this is the first december and 2009 onwards i want to generate time so if i if i run this particular command over here if you see it give me eight rows today right till today now i have not given any end value and i have not given any increment value over here okay now the end it basically takes there is a default value if you see for start there is no default value here for the end the default value is midnight prior to the current time in the local time so my current local time is on 9th right so that's why it's prior that means it was basically taking till 8th 11:59 so that's why if you see till 8 11 59 it is it is giving me result okay now what is the increment value it has taken over there now the default increment value is one day okay so that's why it is giving you the eight days over here okay that's the that's that's the way it is it is actually functions now gen times creates four different fields one is the end time end human start human and the start time now among these four fields in time and the start time are the epoch value of this of of this basically date or time stamps and end human and start human is the human readable value basically they have converted this in time epoch value to this in human readable value using i think internally strf functions or something like that similar similar stuff okay so this is the four fields it it creates so maybe based on your use case you can play around this this particular this part with with this particular four fields as well okay now let us take another example over here okay so in in the in previous example we have just given the date only right we have not given any any time stamp over here so let us say we want to generate you want to generate this this time data okay from midnight okay so from 12/1 2019 and this time i'll be giving end okay let's say 08 okay 8th of december 2019 evening 7 pm that means 19 0 zero okay so the here i am giving a end end over here okay and and let us let us give a increment value increment value one a one hour over here okay it it makes more sense because we are dealing with time now okay so now let we we have 
we have included this increment input so if you just see the documentation for increment it only supports our minute second and day okay so it does not support week and other other stuff over there it, that, that you have to remember okay so if i just run now this guy over here okay so now if you see it over here like for each and every hour it is it is generating a particular timestamp record over here okay now in in the start and end you can you can give some numbers as well let's say i i can i can give from starting it should be let's say 30 days ago okay end will be let's say 27 if i just give minus 27 that means end will be till three days back okay so in that case i will not give any any of the timestamp over here increment let let's keep the the default increment only okay so let us see now if you if you see it over here it just have taken three days over there right in between three days like this december 9 10 and 11 over here sorry november 9 10 and 11 over here right because 30 days back it was it was november 9th because today is december 9th right so in that way also you can give like you can just give some some integers over here and you can go back okay now now if you see the splunk documentation here it's saying like the command does not work for future dates okay so maybe it was meant like something like if you are giving the date in in this manner like mmdd yyyy format it, it may not work so let, let us try that one out okay so if i'm just giving start date as first jan 01 01 2020 okay and in let's say jan 30th 2020 let's see whether it is this one works or not even i think it it, it works over here okay so so even even in this format also it it, it works over here like if i just give three okay that means in future three days start from three days from now okay and end till from 27 days from now okay so even even this this guy also works so currently i'm using splunk 8 over here okay maybe you try in your if you are using older version of the splunk try it out and let me know if if, if the same stuff works for you or not okay maybe then we can we can give a comment over here so that splunk can I can rectify this one from their end as well okay so we, we saw about the start date we saw different different we saw the basically the timestamp values we saw end and increment value as well okay and we have seen couple of examples over here as well now let us let us take a use case over here okay so suppose we have a we have two date ranges two dates date values over there we just want to know how many business days are there in between those those two days okay so let's say I, i'll just create a very simplistic data over here let's say make make results okay eval start date or end date let's say i'll take this one first december okay till 8 december okay so we 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 have total eight days here so so now if i if i just do the gen times on on this these two dates over here okay now we have to remember one thing now gen time is a event generating command okay if i just see it over here it's an event generating command that means it has to be the first command in the in, in the search okay so you, you cannot use gen time something like this one gen times start equals to start equals to if i just wanted to give the start date over here it, it does not work in 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 that in this way okay so in these scenarios what you need to do basically you need to run a map search over here right so this is this is the single row we have it over here okay and then we will be running a map search search equals to so here we will be running the gen times command okay now in the gen times command we we need to give our in the start input we'll be giving this start date okay so let us give that one so this is how we pass the outer search value into the map search value okay if you want to know more about the map command i have created already created a video for the map commands maybe look at look out for that one okay and 
end we will be giving the value of this end date here right so if i just run this one now increment i have not given because it will by default it is one day which is which is what we want okay so you basically from first till our eight it, it generated the data right it generated the time values over here right so now we just wanted to know whether how many business days are there so that means we have to remove this sunday and saturday from from this particular list over here right so what we can do so then after that we will just do a simple search right so let's say search start human okay start human not equals to if i just write sun star that means wh whichever is starting with st sunday it will be removing that one okay and start human if i just copy this one and it will be let's say saturday star so if i just run this one now so it will remove this saturday sunday from this particular row row values over here or list over here right so then we will just say stats 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 count to just to see how many number of business days are there so there are five business days in between these two dates over there okay so this is one way to find a find the number of business days between two dates there are there are lot of other ways definitely possible so other commands as well in splunk okay but this is one of the ways you can find the number of business days between two days over here just remember map search is not very good command when you have huge volume of rows okay to work on okay but if you have lesser volume of rows uh, th this is perfectly fine over there okay so hopefully this this list of use cases or the this this particular command is helpful okay this is a very simplistic command and sometimes very useful command as well okay in future videos we will try to see more more commands in splunk as well okay see you in next video